record. Okay, so this is the last night's homework problems. I'm going to go through them quickly. They're already written out for you. Check your answers. Okay, I'm going to leave the pieces of paper in your hands. So if you made a mistake, you mark up your own paper and say, I need to remember to do this tomorrow. Number one, acceleration. We're given velocity and time. The formula we need is change in velocity divided by time. We're going to substitute in. We're going to get 9.8 meters per second squared. I believe I did this one with you yesterday. <clears throat> it's really straightforward. There's no sig fig problems. There's no uh, conversion factors. There's no manipulation of the algebra. Real straightforward. Questions here? Okay, number two. And this one was what is the distance in kilometers given a time of 0.8 hours, a velocity of 30.0 meters per second? My formula for velocity. I'm going to warn you one more time. Do not use S for speed, okay? If you see the word speed, we're thinking velocity, okay? Just always switch gears. Speed is something that we use in grammar school because people know the word speed, but in scientific world, we're almost always going to use velocity. Distance divided by time. In this case, we need to solve this one for distance. So we multiply both sides by T. And that's how we get T times V equals D. Substitute in down here. Notice that I had to change my hours to seconds. Otherwise, it's not going to cancel out down here with the seconds. Okay? So I used 60 minutes per hour and 60 seconds per minute. I'm OK if you know that 60 times 60 is 3,600. If you put that one conversion factor in, which you need to remember, it's 3,600 seconds per hour. You can do that if you want. Don't mess it up. Um, questions on number two? Okay, number three. We're looking for the mass here in kilograms. We're given acceleration and force very similar to the bell work problem we just did. So this is Newton's second law, F equals ma. And um, so Ma says, I need M here instead of F. So we're going to divide both sides by A. So we're going to 18,000 Newtons. And again, here is that little trick we need to know. Okay, where, where does a Newton come from? A Newton comes from a kilogram times a meter per second squared. By definition, one Newton is one, four, one Newton of force accelerating something one meter per second squared. So that's the definition of one newton. I like it. it's one, it's not 4.3 or uh, eight ounces per cup, four cups per quart, four quarts per gallon. And 18,000 divided by 1.8 meters per second squared. Here I have two sig figs, two sig figs. My answer needs to be interesting. My answer needs to be two sig figs. I have a choice. If I write it as scientific notation, I do have two sig figs. Remember, if I put that 1.0, that is two sig figs. If I write it out like this, this is only one sig fig right now. Okay? So it's really awkward. Yeah, this is, a, this is an awkward one where you get to that final answer and you say, how do I write 10,000 as two sig figs? About the only way to do it is using scientific notation. Because I can change that to three sig figs by going 1.00. I can change it to four sig figs by writing it as 1.000. Or I can change it to one sig fig by eliminating the decimal and just saying one times 10 to the fourth. But this is definitely one sig fig. So I can't count that as my final answer. Okay, it's got to be two sig figs because of these two numbers up here. So just be careful with that. Any questions on here? Okay, number four, here's a density one. This one's a little bit tricky because there's two pieces of information you need to add together. It's not really tricky. I got flour and water. We're mixing up some dough, right? Maybe we make some pizza or something like that tonight. And um, so I got 600 grams of flour, 750 grams of water. We're going to mix them together. And what's the density of this stuff after we mix it together? 
So notice my mass here. I've just written the two numbers down and combined them. Uh, by the way, that's 1,350. And you can write that right in there. My volume, one liter, 1 1.00 liters. What is the density, I think the question said, of one liter of this dough? Um, and so I'm going to change that to milliliters because it told me that I need the units to be in grams per milliliter. So I see these units. My brain is thinking that's liters, that's milliliters. I need to do something with this unit. So here's my formula, density equals mass divided by volume. I'm going to substitute the numbers in, which is nice and easy now, because I've got 1,000 milliliters, 1,350 grams, and the answer is 1.35 grams per milliliter. Now, on sig figs on this question, guys, uh, in theory, I've got uh, one sig fig, two sig figs, and three sig figs, because of the decimal point right here. Uh, so in theory, this should actually be one sig fig. I, I'm just having a problem with that because if I, I can picture myself making some dough here, and I measure out 600 grams, I'm probably using a measuring cup, and it's probably 600 grams. I'm probably not somewhere between 500 and 700 grams. Um, so I'm guessing I, I just I wanted to leave this as three sig figs because of what I know about measuring out flour and water and stuff like that. You could also call this obviously one gram per milliliter if you rounded it down to one sig fig to match this. But I'd probably be okay and give some leniency on this type of problem if you left it as three. And that's just a judgment call. Okay? Any questions? Math is straightforward. This one's just a conversion. There's no problem here other than changing these units into those units. Uh, you can do this a number of different ways. I took a one-step process here. I know that on my King Henry acrostic, it goes from centi to milli. That's two, those are right next to each other, so it's 10 milliliters and one centiliter. You could also go centiliters to liters and then liters to milliliters, which just takes more work. If I was going to do that, I would go 100 centiliters I started doing it this way, by the way, um, and then I would have had to go backwards and say there's a thousand milliliters in one liter. That works, but a thousand divided by a hundred is ten, so it doesn't make sense to do two steps when you can do one step. But it would work, okay? And there's, it would be wrong to do this. Okay? It's just you're, you're changing it to liters and then undoing it by going back to milliliters. Here I get something close to this, 5,000 quarts. Sig figs, one sig fig right here, so one sig fig over here. And you can write it either way, both of these are correct for sig figs. Okay, number six. Okay, another acceleration problem using the Newton's second law. In this case, we're solving for acceleration, F over M. Again, very similar to this one over here. 300 newtons divided by 1.5 kilograms. And for the same reason that we discussed here about the kilogram meter per second squared, that's going to cancel out, leaving the kilograms. Meters per second squared is left over. Kilograms cancel out. So this is a kilogram meter per second squared. Kilograms cancel out with kilograms, leaving these units here. One sig fig, two sig figs, so my answer is limited to one, which works out nice. It's 300 divided by 1.5 is 200. Questions here? Am I doing okay? I think I, I saw a lot of good work on your papers. Number seven. Okay, this is 3,000 kil kilograms per cubic meter. We're working with cement here, really heavy stuff. We're working in big volumes like cement trucks, cubic meters. The volume is one liter. How much would one liter have for mass? If I took a sample of this cement out of this big batch with a certain density. Here's the formula. Rho equals m over v. I'm solving this one for mass, so rho <coughs> times v. Again, we multiply by v on both sides. It cancels out here. Rho times v equals m. And I've got to resolve this liter to cubic meter thing. 
Okay, so there's a couple different ways of doing that. Um, the way I've chosen to show you is based on the textbook. The textbook shows us that by definition, a one liter is equal to a decimeter cubed. I remember that. You don't have to remember that. There's, that's why I said there's other ways to get there. But in the textbook, it shows you a decimeter times a decimeter times a decimeter is one liter. So I used a decimeter cubed is one liter. Then I said there's 10 decimeters in a meter. And then I cubed that. And so the liters cancel out, the decimeters cubed cancel out, and the meters cubed up here. And it's basically 1,000 to 1. There's 1,000 of these in one cubic meter, which is a big gap. Now, you can do this different ways. You could go from liters to milliliters. Then you could change milliliters to cubic centimeters. Then you could change cubic centimeters to cubic meters. But it would take a little bit more work. Okay? And you get the same answer. You're still going to get 1,000 to 1. So in this case, again, one liter equals one one thousandth of a liter cubed. Well, we would say there's a thousand liters in one liter cubed. So when I get down here, I need the meters cubed from the bottom of the density to cancel out. So it's one meter cubed per thousand. Oops. No. No, that's not. No, it's just one, oh, this, yeah, this is one one thousandth of a meter cubed. That's right. There is no units in the denominator. It's just one one thousandth of a meter cubed. I had somebody yesterday say, yes, we can call that point zero zero one if you want. That's fine. Okay, final answer is three kilograms. Um, one sig fig, one sig fig, one sig fig. Three thousand divided by a thousand is three, so it works out really nice. Questions here? If we have time, we can come back and take a look at doing this in point. Be careful with cubic measurements. Remember when you have a conversion factor that's linear, 10 centimeters in a decimeter, or 10 decimeters in a meter, or 100 centimeters in a meter. That's linear. If I need to change that to a cubic measurement, I need to cube everything. I need to cube the numerator and the denominator, which means the units change from meters to meters cubed. The decimeters change from decimeters to decimeters cubed, and that 10 is 10 times 10 times 10. Okay, so you need to cube the whole conversion factor if you're changing from something that's linear to something that's cubic. Okay. Number eight. Um, looks like I didn't finish this one. <laughs> I didn't bell rang for a moment. So let's work it together. T equals question mark. What are we looking for in units up here? Anybody? Victoria, what do you do? Seconds, good. Anybody else do something different than seconds? Hours. It, it doesn't say. So the problem doesn't tell you what the units have to be. So you have a choice. This is your choice. Um, this is number... So it just says, how long? Uh, I don't know. Hours, minutes, seconds. Hours and minutes and seconds, good choice. So we could do it. We could do it in hours. We could do it in minutes. We could do it in seconds. We could do it in hours, minutes, and seconds. We could do it in milliseconds if you want. But it would be really crazy. Okay. Um, so um, distance 70 kilometers. Velocity 32 kilometers per hour. Formula. Now here's the one that's going to give some of you problems. And I didn't look at your sheets in visual. I'm, I'm guessing that um, six people out of this class probably missed, did not get this step right here. This is the problematic step. I know in my first period of class, struggling this, still have a few students struggling with this. This is the kind of thing you need to get some help with, either today after school from me, or from somebody else who knows how to do this. Solving for a denominator takes two steps. I'm gonna show you how to do it, because I know, and I'm not gonna single anybody out, there's somebody that is still struggling with this. Velocity equals distance divided by time, and I need to solve for time. You have to do it in two steps. 
If you do it a thousand times and you think you can do it in one step, good. But the minute you get it wrong, go back and do it in two steps, okay? How do I get that T into the numerator? It's in the denominator. I see a lot of students still just magically moving things from the denominator to the numerator. You can't unless you use some algebra. So we're going to multiply by T over 1 on both sides. The T's cancel out, and now I have TV equals D. We're not there yet. Okay, I need to solve this for the, the T. But now I've got the T in the numerator, and everybody from here should be able to figure out what to do next. Okay, step one is from here to here. Step two, we're going to divide by the V so I can get the T all by itself. So step two is to divide by what I don't want. <coughs> and the V's are going to cancel out and get T equals distance divided by velocity. Okay, please, if you got this one wrong on your homework last night, I'm guessing that's why. You need to know how to do that. Trust me. Huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. See, didn't finish the problem. Get distracted. So, okay, so it needs to be, T comes up here, the V goes down here. Distance divided by velocity. Thank you. Now we can substitute. I didn't finish this one. This is. Yeah, we did that one already, right? So let's go ahead and substitute the numbers in here. So 70 kilometers divided by 32 kilometers per hour. Now, again, this is kilometers divided by kilometers per hour. So if I look at these units, I can think of it as kilometers over 1 divided by kilometers per hour. Okay, the kilometers are going to cancel out, and then this hour is going to move up here. Why? Treat it like a complex fraction. I need to multiply by the reciprocal. So basically, I'm going to flip this button, maybe upside down, and multiply by hours over kilometers. So the kilometers do cancel out. I end up with hours. It works. Okay? Do this enough times, and you'll start to see how these units work out. So this is going to be in hours. It's going to work out beautifully. Kilometers going to cancel out. 70 divided by 32 is 1, 2, 2 points. Okay. 2.1875. Obviously, I'm not going to keep all that. And this is going to be the answer in hours. Um, sig figs. Two sig figs here, one sig fig here. Again, technically, we're supposed to round that off to two sig figs, which is two hours. Now, if you did it in minutes, you'd have a conversion factor in here to either change this to kilometers per second. I mean, if you did it in seconds. Um, or I could get all the way to this answer and then change that answer to seconds by multiplying by 60 twice. Times 60 to get minutes and then times 60 to get seconds. Okay? Or we can change this velocity to kilometers per second. Which is still going to be multiplying by 60 twice. Ah. Notice I'm catching my own errors, okay? A, and I'm, I didn't do that on purpose. But when I see that my units are not going to cancel out, I know I've made a mistake. And I was about to write that upside down. Okay? I was hoping nobody noticed. But this is a teachable point, okay? You catch your own error. I'm, I'm, I'm writing 60 minutes per hour. I'm about, I can't have hours in the denominator twice. That would be hours squared in the denominator. That's There's nothing for hours squared. I have to have the hours up here. And then I have to have minutes up here, 60 minutes. Something's still up. Oh, seconds. I need seconds. So one minute is 60 seconds. Hours, hours, minutes, minutes, kilometers per second. Yeah, so that's actually divided by 60 twice. And again, if I want to do it in seconds, then I could take that number and substitute that down here for this number. Okay. Anybody have the answer in seconds? 
about 8,000 or something like that. It'd be uh, 7,875 seconds. Round it off to one six, it would be 8,000 seconds. Oh, we're pretty good. That's a good guess. Okay? Good? Okay, number nine. Is this number nine? It's out of place. Number nine, change 15 pounds of meat into kilograms. That's not number nine. That was number four or whatever. I don't know why it's there. I'm going to leave it there for now. 15 pounds of meat. I like looking at some of your homeworks because many of you did it in one step. <laughs> you found the conversion factor on the back side of your periodical table. It says there's 2.2 pounds in one kilogram. Ta-da! And what's our answer in two sig figs? Kill? 6.8. Doesn't run to six point nine. I'm just asking. I don't know. Um, you could also do it by going through the grams. If you did it this way, this is the way I probably do it. I never memorized this two point two one, so I'd always go four hundred fifty four grams per pound because I didn't memorize that one, and then I'd go a thousand grams per kilogram. Going to get the same answer, 6.8. If you're really insane, you can change it to ounces by multiplying by 16. And there was a problem in the book we did the other day that had a conversion from ounces to milliliters. Uh, no, that wouldn't work. No. <laughs> okay. All right, cool. That was one through nine, right? Tonight? Finish them up, 10 through 13. We got some more time, so I'm going to do uh, another problem here. Find practice, 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 right? Why don't you grab a piece of paper, too? Let's make it easy to solve one here. Um, ooh, yeah, I forgot about this. There we go. Uh, I'm not sure about some of these problems. I haven't solved some of these because I wrote them over the weekend. Um, so let's try number two. How much space does a pillow take up in cubic decimeters? Oh, gag me. Okay, if it has a density of 0.2222 grams per cubic centimeter and a mass of 700 grams. I have no idea if this is a realistic pillow or not, but it sounds nice. I think it was getting late at night and I was thinking about pillows. Okay, so you can use your sheet or you can use a piece of paper. I want to see. Steps. Step number one. We're working this one right here. How much space? What do I write down? Mr. Caleb. So what do I write down on my paper? Okay, so three things. Let's work it over here on the side. For the sake of my camera, I'm going to erase this work right here. First thing, capital V or small v? What do you think? Russell? Capital V for volume. Not that I can tell by reading your handwriting, okay? But how much space, capital V for volume? equals, like Kill said, question mark, and it tells me what I need to unit speak. This is a weird one. We write it decimeters dm cubed. Decimeters cubed. Okay, then um, he also said density. That's our row. Practice drawing your rows. I don't want to see P's. I don't want to see capital D's like some of you were still writing last week. Okay, this is row. It stands for density. Uh, 0.2222. Number three, mass, 700 grams. What's the formula we're going to use here? Alan? Row, row, row your boat. Mass divided by volume down the stream. Okay? 
We need to solve this. Alex Fleming, what do I get for a formula? Volume equals mass divided by density. Okay, volume equals mass divided by density. So once I solve this for the V, it's going to be the same two steps as over there. Okay, same two steps. Multiply both sides by V, then divide both sides by rho. We're going to get V equals M over rho. Now I can substitute. I'm going to double check, and when I start writing these numbers, I'm going to say grams and grams. I'm going to make sure I both got grams. That's going to work out nicely. Okay? We're going to have to do something with the units, because this is decimeters cubed, and this is going to be centimeters cubed, but let's worry about that after I get an answer. So, volume equals 700 grams divided by 0 0.2222 grams per centimeter cubed. That's going to be units of centimeters cubed. The grams are going to cancel out the centimeters cubed. They're going to move to the numerator for the same reason we've been talking about. And anybody got a calculator part done here? Tempe, you got the answer? Um, Something like that. Okay, and that's centimeters cubed. I'm not going to round it off yet because we still have a conversion to do. I got to get this into decimeters cubed. I got one more step. So if I have so this basically now becomes a conversion problem, right? 3,150, uh, okay, we'll keep it, centimeters cubed. How many centimeters in a decimeter? Two. two. What? Ten. ten. I thought somebody said two. Okay, ten, ten centimeters in one decimeter. Now, here's where we get to this thing. This is a linear conversion. This is a cubic value. So I have to cube, just like we did in the previous problem, the whole conversion factor. So that's going to change that to centimeters cubed. That's going to change the numerator to decimeters cubed. Nice. And that's going to be 10 times 10 times 10, which is 1,000. True? That's what I was going to ask. Can we just like, like, if you put the parentheses in cube, can't you just be like times 1 over 10 and times 1 over 10? Absolutely. Absolutely. You can write it, and if you want, three times. One decimeter over 1 to 10 centimeters times 1 decimeter over 10 centimeters times 1 decimeter over 10 centimeters. That's exactly what we're doing. Okay? When we cube this, it's length times width times height. We know that this is true, but we got to do it three times because I'm changing from cubic centimeters to cubic decimeters. So this could be 1,000. 3,150.31 divided by 1,000 should give you 3.150. And we're going to go back and check our sig figs. I got four sig figs. I got one sig fig. I hate it when I write problems like this. And so I lose all of this. My answer is three. Three cubic decimeters. Do not put a decimal after it. Because the minute you write three point, you change your debt, your sig figs. Questions? Okay, we got a lot done. I think we did a lot of good stuff today. Review these. Try a few more of those other four problems tonight. Notice that I took this from the back of your sheet. Okay, this is on the back of your sheet. These are great practice problems. We didn't have time to work them, but if you need extra practice, here they are. Have a great day, everybody. There are extra fill in the blank sheets if anyone wants to grab one on the way out the door. We'll see you tomorrow. We'll take a five question quiz. Tap slash tap.
Uh oh. Shut you up. <laughs> 